county was famous worldwide for its successful range of high horsepower four-wheel drive machines, which were exported to around 150 countries. In 1973, it celebrated war. Although County was working at full capacity to meet the wartime demand for its trucks, Ernest Tapp still found time to design seen here on trial, was based on a Bren gun carrier chassis and was designed to give close armoured support to infantry fighting in villages. It had an armoured compartment which could be elevated by a vacuum system allowing the gunner to fire over walls and hedges. in the can, steered with his feet. An improved two-man version of the tank, a periscope for the driver's vision, could be raised hydraulically to its full elevation in just over and good ground clearance. The tractor also had a unique steering clutch mechanism using internal expanding brake shoes in a drum. New Ford's and overhead valve diesel engine, the tractor performed well and made light and was replaced in 1956 by the industrial Mark IV crawler with modified heavy duty rear axle housings. This loading shovel, based on a Mark IV the County CD50, which came out in 1959, featured several important design improvements over the earlier crawlers. The well proved For cross drainage work with the Forestry Commission, the County developed a low ground pressure crawler known as the Long Swamp Tractor. The first version appeared in 1954 and was based on the Mark III crawler. This early model had extended track frames mounted on a pivot on the rear axle hubs. Later County Swamp tractors were fitted with cast steel axle housings and the track frames were mounted on the inside. The massive 30-inch tracks exerted a ground pressure of only two pounds per square inch. Consequently, the long swamp was even capable of working on soft terrain where it would prove impossible for a person to walk. Based on the CD50 crawler, is seen working in Scotland with a Cuthbertson drainage plough for the Forestry Commission. County swamp tractors were used for land reclamation, draining peat bogs and preparing wetlands for cultivation and afforestation. Quite a number were built and at least three were exported to Japan. The county was continually exploring new overseas markets and was building up an encouraging export trade. The county built its first four-wheel drive tractor in 1954. The four-drive, seen here on trial, was basically a crawler on rubber tyres with the front wheels chain-driven by sprockets on the rear axle. Even the crawler steering system was retained. The tractor was built at the request of the sugarcane industry in Puerto Rico, which required a machine that combined both the power and adhesion of a crawler and the mobility of a wheeled tractor. It had to perform equally well on the land and the road to replace both the crawlers used in the fields and the antiquated railway system, the four drive, proved capable of coping with up to 60 tons of loaded sugarcane trailers with ease, as well as handling all the cultivation work for the crop. The county did not have as much success selling the four drive on the home market as it did in the Caribbean. A number of tractors were fitted with Bray angle dozers in an attempt to interest the crawler skid steering system and few were sold in the UK. Four-wheel drive tractor with conventional steering on trial. The prototype, based on the Fordson Power Major, 
was the first machine to embody County's unique design principle of using twin propeller shafts to transmit the power to the front wheels. The superiority of the new four-wheel drive machine over conventional two-wheel drive tractors was soon apparent. It was put into production in 1961 as the Countons. The Super 6 came in for some styling changes in 1963 and was fitted with a fiberglass bonnet and a distinctive new radiator shroud. The tractor was also finished in blue and grey to match Ford's new colour scheme. This pivot steer timber tractor was another experimental county machine. Based on the Fords and Dexter, only three were built. Two were sold to the Forestry Commission in Northern Ireland and one is believed to have gone to Scandinavia. Probably the most unusual of all the county tractors was the Seahorse, an amphibious version of the four-wheel drive Super 4. County certainly knew how to make the news. On the 30th of July, 1963, David Tapp, one of Ernest's sons, used the Seahorse to cross the English Channel in an unrivaled publicity stunt. The tractor, propelled by the motion of the oversized Goodyear tyres, averaged nearly four knots. The crossing of 28 nautical miles from Cap Grinet on the French coast took just under eight hours. Buoyancy was provided by flotation tanks front and rear and watertight compartments in each wheel. David Tapp's main problem was surprisingly not one of seasickness, but boredom. After having been the only tractor ever to be logged passing the South Goodwin Lightship, the Seahorse came ashore at Kingsdown near Dover, and David Tapp was able to wash the salt away with a pint of warm English beer. The Seahorse was demonstrated to the Forestry Commission in Scotland, and three were sold to Holland for exploration and seismic survey work off the Dutch polders. In 1964, the new tractors were put through a full-scale and rigorous test programme at various research establishments across the UK. Both models were designed to be used for a variety of applications in agriculture and industry. The county also developed a heavy-duty loading shovel, a facelift with new styling to match the Ford Force range. The most interesting product in county's new range was the forward control tractor. Conceived as a platform vehicle with cross-country performance, it could be fitted with various specialised bodies or equipment. The initial idea for the machine came from David Tapp who's seen putting the prototype FC-654 through its paces in 1965. The forward control introduced a whole new concept in tractor design and had immediate appeal to specialised equipment manufacturers. Agricultural versions of the forward control tractor could be fitted with high capacity mountations, including the fitting of a fifth wheel coupling, which enabled the tractor to handle large semi-trailers both on and off the road. For use on building sites, 
The Ford Control could also be fitted with a five cubic yard dump body of county's own design. Cement could be delivered across any type of terrain when the tractor was fitted with this three and a half cubic yard Benford cement skip attachment. County tractors had many industrial uses, from bulldozing to road construction, towing vibratory or compaction rollers, or handling large section pipes. For larger jobs, a bout and sightmaster crane mounted on a forward control tractor could lift up to five tons. The go-anywhere ability of the county made it an ideal prime mover for industry. These 1004 tractors were used with Wickham Pool semi-trailers on pipeline and electric pylon projects across the UK. the Shawnee pooled tractors. The versatility of this type of unit is demonstrated by this 1004 tractor which loads the trailer from this rotting heap of sugar beet. Here, 16 county tractors were used on a seawall consolidation project, hauling goose dump trailers. In 1971, county strengthened the top end of its range with the development of this prototype machine based on the American Ford 9000 skid unit. With a six-cylinder engine, turbocharged to 145 horsepower, it was the most powerful county tractor yet built. Aimed at large farmers, the new tractor was released in June 1972 as the 1454. A sister model, the 100... Two new models of unequal size four-wheel drive tractors, the 6604 and the 7604, were also brought out in 1975. The drive for the front axle on these four-cylinder machines was taken... In Scotland and Northern Ireland, county tractors equipped with 42-inch terror tyres were used by the Forestry Commission for drainage and cultivation work. Like the earlier swamp crawlers, the tractors were capable of working on peat bogs that would hardly support the weight of a man. This 1004 was fitted with a reduction box and used with a Clark plough for reclaiming land for a new forest to be planted. Other drainage problems could be solved by one of several pipes carrying a compressor and extra drill pipes made up the team. Back in Scotland, this Highland timber tractor, built by James Jones, was one of many county-based forestry machines working around the world. 
actor is seen being used as a timber forwarder in the pulpwood forests of Scandinavia. In the diamond field, these were used for hauling sugarcane and for cultivating and planting. This special wide 754 was built in 1970 for planting sugarcane in South Africa. Bed for wheat in Australia. In the wetter conditions, this county 754, working with a rotavator, prepared the ground ready for rice to be planted. By the mid-1970s, County was riding on the crest of a wave. Not only did it dominate the UK four-wheel drive market, but it was still managing to export 70% of its production.